Hello, this is Rebirth of Legend here, looking at another anti-mage game. What the fuck? That's weird. There it is. There's my pretty face. Alright, so... Player asks, what could he have done to win this game? Our anti-mage is going to be on the dire side. Hmm. I look at the wrong fucking... No, okay, we're good, we're good. So, um, some other people pointed out, as is, that, um, you have way too low of tower damage. You've got 1.7k tower damage. I honestly have no idea how your team even killed towers, because you have barely any damage. It's like the creeps did all the damage for your team. Generally, in a game that you win, the tower damage you should see is, like, 12k across the board if you look at the enemy team in that yeah i'll put it on screen for a second we got time right i know they're gonna your someone on your team is gonna pick a fucking like two junglers which is unfortunate but that's what it is all right so here we go you like to see the link team has about 12k damage in a winning game on an am you could have between like six and like 10k is usually where i'll find myself at just depends how much you can rat Generally, like, oddly enough, like, the further you are, like, behind or the closer the game is, the more I find myself ratting hard. So let's talk about some of the itemizations and some of the decision-making you're going to make, because I think I know what the problem's going to be. The problem is going to be that you don't rat enough. You actually, um, oddly enough, I, I, I've reviewed a lot of games, and I know Southeast Asian players tend to not actually farm a lot at all, and you actually have over 10 creeps a minute. That's probably about 11. Let's break out the calculator. Let's figure this out. 479... Divided by 45.6. 10.5. Which is not great. But that's pretty high considering what I usually see from like Southeast Asian players. Who I guess, I, I don't know, maybe the meta there just involves less farming or whatever. But you, you, just generally speaking, you don't see as much farm. It kind of sucks. Like you second pick the AM, which is fine. Um, it's never fun when you're against hard CC like a fucking Enigma. Um... But, like, you're pretty good against the Invoker, and if you get far enough ahead, you can handle it. Actually, you're good against Jug, too, because you can just blink out of his ult. So, uh, you're pretty good against these two. Enigma gives you a decent mana pool to ult if he's low, and you can interrupt his, his ult from afar. And you can man fight a Huskar later on pretty well. That's what we do. Uh, starting build's fine. You didn't have the money for, like, a Ring of Protection. And rushing the Quelling Blade is also totally fine. Do you think you're going to be in a contested lane? Starting with the Salve can be alright too. I like how you aggro the creeps towards you so you can get some easy farm. That's really good. You don't see that in all the games. You have the Lion who's helping you up there. It's probably worth holding the skill point. A Blink might be a little better against a Huskar. Than a level 1 Mana Break. I think you definitely just go like... One, then the other, and then level three into Spell Shield, though. It's pretty much a given. It's nice that he pulls. You get to creep under tower in a little bit, which is good. So, anyway, what I think we're going to see in this game... I like how you're, you're handling, like... Like, it's definitely a difficult lane, but you're aggroing creeps, and I think you're playing this, like, mechanically, like, pretty well. Okay, you're taking way too much damage here. You're going to die here. Oh, didn't die. I sent myself a salve. I wouldn't bother going back to base. That's kind of silly. Does the lion have a salve? If the lion has a salve, you should ask him to salve you. Going back to base is really bad. You don't really want to go back there unnecessarily. Like, when I look at this, I would think that it's probably an offlane Huskar. Like, with a fair degree of certainty, I would be. I would think that I would be against an offlane Huskar. Which can be annoying. I think you were handling it well until you, um... Until you took all that unnecessary damage and then walked home. That's like an extraordinarily, extraordinary waste of time. I'm getting harassed again. Um, see, if you blinked on that dude, and he, see if bolt stuns. If he has bolt stuns, you could have maybe killed him. Nah, he doesn't have the hex. This was kind of stupid on his part. If he had one, if he had the hex instead, or he went like one one one, he probably could have done a little more. Here's what you should ask him to salve you, too. Like, I think you could be getting a little more from lane right now. 
I think you really hurt yourself going home. I think you're missing some last hits, and you're taking too much harass and getting not enough for it. It is a Huskar that you're leaning against. I mean, a fucking jungle LC definitely makes it hard. But ideally, that means that when you can jungle, he'll be out of there. You should be creeping that, that hard camp, too. Like, when you pull like that, and you can't walk up to creep wave, then you use your pull to get more creeps. Like, if you're ever in a really difficult angle, let's say this is a 1v1, the lion wasn't even here. But like, if you're in a 1v1 and this lion's not even here, I think you can kill this guy. Good job. I mean, your lion died, but it's worth it, I think. It's worth it because it gives you a free lane. And you're going right into Treads, which is good. Some people Battle Fury Rush. Treads before your Battle Fury is always the way to go. I think uh, Poor Man Shield's probably fine, too. Between a Poor Man Shield and a Ring of Health, like, you can jungle. You can actually jungle pretty well. And particularly when you're against a contested lane, you want that option. Because the Poor Man Shield increases the block from 16 to 20 against creeps. And against heroes, obviously, it's a 100% block chance. But that's not really relevant for the jungling. Yeah, it's definitely annoying. Like, here you're kind of wasting time. Uh, you don't feel too comfortable walking up here, which is understandable. You want to pull your creep wave here, then. It's going to push towards you, so you're going to be able to creep under tower, which is good. Um, yeah, so we're getting, we're getting a little bit here. I think pulling would have been better to get that under your creep wave a little quicker. This is really good. Like, this is where... You should actually be winning this lane now, like, pretty well. Did he win his duel, too? He did. See, like, him getting over... Him overextending like that is really bad. And now you're getting another couple minutes free in the lane. Well, maybe not a couple, but probably a minute and a half at least. And, like, in situations like this, you should be autoing the creep wave down. So you can utilize the jungle. Like, you're pretty behind. And you know, like, the Huskar is going to contest you if he walks back into lane anyway, right? So what's the point in, like, waiting... If you're having trouble last hitting, you can also just... A lot of people don't know this, and it actually took me a long time to know this. You don't need to get a belt of strength. When you're building treads, any of the 450 gold items can actually build it. So you can use a band of elven skin, robe of magi, or belt of strength to build treads. That's something I found funny when I first found that out, and I felt like an idiot for now. Because I always thought, like, why can't it build from any of them? It's still kind of bug though, where if you buy, like, the Band of Elven skin, it'll show that you still need two components. Like, if you have Boots, Band of Elven skin, it'll show that you still need the Belt of Strength for some reason. It, like, doesn't acknowledge that any of those can build into it. I still would like to see the Poor Man Shield here, and we'll go for the Battle Fury. Um, you got a little less out of lane than I think you could have if you abuse this pull a little more. Now the Huskar is gone. Oh, no, there he is. You can also level your blink here, too. Um, stats is good, but, like, when you alternate your levels between blinking and stats, like, if you get your stats at, in the beginning or after... Sorry, I'm not speaking so inconcisely here. But, like, someone like that who might, like, try and dive you or whatever, if you have, like... Who's another good... Like, like let's say someone like a Weaver. Oh, we're not going to Vlad's first, are we? That's That would be a very poor decision. I understand that just for the healing, if you feel like you're getting harassed a lot. But, um, I think you could have gotten a poor man shield instead of it, and it would let you jungle a lot, too. I think you're tread switching, too, which is really good. See, so I got a blink. He does. See, so you, you, your game actually started off slower than I would have thought, based off your farm and everything. I assumed you would have had a pretty decent lane, but you're definitely struggling a little bit. Oh shit, son. Oh, that's rough. All that was very rough. Speed this up a little bit? No, we're only next two. We'll just watch at this speed. It doesn't matter. How long is this game? We got 35 minutes, 17 minutes. Okay. So. Whenever possible, you want to be farming lane over jungle. It's like you're trying to tread swap, but then, like, you need to go back to add your treads here if you're really trying to do that. It seemed like you were giving it a try, but you just need to get more comfortable with it, because it seems like you just your swaps are, like, a little slow. 
Like, your whole team's up here, so now I think it's really smart for you to go farm the woods. Um, you're here to contribute basically a mana void as necessary. Get one, maybe two big kills there. It's really good. That helps you out a lot. You haven't died yet, which is nice. Like, that's a really important thing that I see a lot of people don't understand. When they're in a difficult lane, the biggest thing is just not dying, honestly. So LC shouldn't be a cunt. He should throw you a heal. Oh, he doesn't have one. We'll allow it then. Uh, I think you failed to tread swap there, too. Yeah, I... I, uh, I was just about to make a comment about the poor man shield over headdress. Like, you're planning on getting the Vlads anyway, so it's fine. Here... That was good. It was unfortunate you had to take the nuke for that, but you guys got a kill, so in the end it's worth it. Is he even earn? That'd be swell. Fun fact, if you're ever a support and no one on your team has an earn, you should always get an earn. It's like the best item in Dota. See, you can have like an 18-19 minute Treads Battle Fury, and this game started off like kind of slow. Your team is pretty even, too, so, like, this isn't bad. And you were able to contribute on some kills, like... Like, you're doing pretty okay, considering how the game started. You guys are actually doing really well. I think you're being a little inefficient here. I think you should have ran top and started farming again. You're going back to base, but you don't need to. Like, you can always not blink somewhere, right? Uh so weird. The problem with getting rid of that stout shield, <laughs> I would honestly put away the headdress before I put away the stout shield, because without that, when you go to jungle, you're going to take a lot of damage. You'll notice if you go into the woods a lot here, you're going to lose a lot of your HP, but like, it's only until you get your last part of your battle fury, so it's not, it's not the end of the world. Another thing, like, I probably wouldn't have, okay, that, that is a mistake. You're lucky this dude's a fucking idiot. He could have just ulted you right there and hope for good spins because you blink. You never want to blink onto a juggernaut because you can blink out of his ultimate, right? Uh, his, I don't know if you knew his ult's on cooldown, but it is. So he spun to like block some of your damage and whatever. So that goes kind of evenly. But like, let's say he had his ult up. I don't know if you knew it or not. Blinking onto it means he can ult you and you can't run away. And like, he might get some lucky spins. You know, we don't really know. Like, if he's level 11, he could probably have killed... Yeah, he's level 14. He, if he had his ult, he definitely could have just killed you by ulting there. So, it comes down to whether or not you knew that. Either way, I think it's, like, a bold decision. Personally, I would have stayed in the lane and kept pushing it to the tower. Because, like, right now your team has no towers. Like, to get your team really in this game, you want to just try and rat and, like, get those towers. Yeah, let's look at this again. I think... We saw the Enigma, I think, right? You see the two of them, and you walked up way too far. <laughs> Is there a different direction we could have blinked here? Could have blinked into the tree line to your right. That would have saved you. He'd have to... I think he already midnight pulsed before that. So he drops the midnight pulse there, which means he can't break the tree line. So if you blink to your right into here, you could TP out safely. Unless he's got Blink Black Hole, which he didn't have. That's something you gotta be aware of, too, because you knew the Enigma had a Blink, and he's probably got Phase Boots, right? Yeah, he's got Phase Boots, Yasha, so he can just run when you write down. It's still a little reckless. You have the Battle Fury now, 20 minutes. It's a little slow, but that's okay. Like we said, it was a tough lane, and, like, that was one death due to, like, a poor decision. But it's not the end of the world. Just like when you're behind, things like that are really gonna hurt, though. Just end fast. This lion's super upset. So, I know one of the comments talked about Vlad's versus Vanguard, and I commented on one of them, and someone else agreed with me. You should not be going towards this right now. You are lucky that lion was on point with that hex, or you both were dead. So that guy was getting ready to black hole. He gets a black hole. That went pretty well. This thing, I think they're I think they're decently ahead right now. If we looked at the recap, I think your team ended up the best for that. Yeah, they're up quite a bit actually. The kill screen's a little deceptive, but this SF I guess is poor. Yeah, he is. 
He's poor. The axe is actually reasonably farmed. He's probably like the most farmed on your team, actually. It's pretty close. Broken axe, mate. Yep. That blade mail has to just fucking annihilate that house guy. It's probably the saddest person. Actually, it's not pure anymore, so I guess it won't matter as much to him. Still, man fighting an axe is never fun. I actually didn't see how you died this last time. Yeah, I should look at that. I think when you're behind, you should look to fight as little as possible and just try and farm. You only ever want to TP to engagements. You have enough for the... What? That is a stupid way to die. You gotta have your finger on the blink right there. If you started running from that guy... So here's another thing. You you would have lived here if you had three levels in stats over your mana break. You don't need your mana break maxed until you have... Um, you don't need mana break maxed until you basically have your manta. And if you're just trying to like live and like push and shit, then you don't want that. So you wouldn't have died there if you had those three levels in stats. Because those three levels in stats are... Uh, six strength which is 120 HP. And you, that would have been enough for you to survive one auto attack from him and everything else. So the point of a Vlad's, <clears throat> so to talk about the Vlad's versus Vanguard, Vlad's lets you push really fucking hard. It lets you farm Ancients with impunity because you won't lose HP because you're gaining it all back from the uh, lifesteal. Uh, so you're getting it all back from the lifesteal, which is good. And it gives your creeps armor, which lets them push harder. Like, let's let's look at... God damn, I can't click that. Whatever. So it's giving them 4 armor. I don't need to point that out. And then it does a 15% damage aura increase. Or 15% bonus armor. So... The point of that is it lets you push really hard, it lets you solo Roche, it lets you farm Ancients, it lets you farm Ancient stacks. The Vanguard lets you farm Ancients, but it's a static regen. So like, let's say um, let's say you want to go trade with the Juggernaut, and you you trade half your HP for like his mana pool. When you blink away to a creep camp, the, the Vlad's is going to let you regen very, very quickly, while a Vanguard just has the static regen. Since AM's always hitting creeps, it's the... Vanguard's going to heal him a lot more, so it helps you with that trading. Uh, I've played around with soloing Roche, and the the Vanguard, even when you have like a Manta Butterfly, I lost a ton of my HP trying to solo Roche. I think I was at like 30%. Well, if I had a, a Vlad instead of that, the uh, Roche would have gotten destroyed. I would have had like 90% of my HP. Because usually you can solo, with these items, you can solo Roche on. Uh, you have them a little late, but I think you could still solo it right now. It would be a little close, though. <laughs> You're chasing that for too long, too. So, like, here it's, like, 27 minutes in, and, like, I've barely seen you at a tower. I saw you do it once. Blink away. Like, you've been farming, like, the jungle, like, pretty well, and you've been, like, farming lanes, but, like, you just run away from towers too much. Like, here, where are you going? Why are you going back to base? You're an AM with a Vlad's. So the point of this is so, being low on health means absolutely nothing to you. Just farming a creep camp will bring you back to, like, full health. Like, if you if you farmed here and here, you'd be at full health. So, like, a big part of anti-mage is being really efficient. Um... And that has to do with, like, not wasting time at all. So, like, here, you should have been pushing this in its entirety, and then you can TP back for this. And, like, you have a TP, so, like, why are you running, like, where are you running to? Like, right now, you could have been pushing this in completely. And you you blink across the map to your woods. Like, what what is the point of this? You lost a Rax while doing nothing for your team. Like, that is, like, the worst decision-making you could ever have on Anti-Mage. You could have pushed in bottom lane and like maybe traded the tier two. You could have you could have TP'd back after the fight broke out to try and win the fight for your team. They don't really have enough magic damage for you to justify leveling spell shield now either. Once again, like you're pushing towers now and your team's getting blown out. You have a manta. Like this is when you want to fight. This is when you're strongest. Like let's look at let's look at this enigma. Six hundred damage mana void. Poker's dead. So there might have been a mana void for you to get on 
the invoker before he died, that could have turned a whole fight for your team. So this is like, like you just started pushing, but like at the wrong time. Like you need to have been pushing creep waves like way earlier than this. God, I have like a fucking, I'm getting like hot flashes, I'm like a fucking old woman. This isn't good. I'm like sick. It's not, not fun. So we're checking here. Like you need to be, when games are like close like this and your team is behind, you need to be making space. Farming the woods does not create space. Like you're just blinking back and forth between the woods. You need to be pushing lanes. Like non-stop. When you push lanes, you force the enemy to respawn to where you are and keep their lanes pushed. Like, here's more... Like, this is, like, the worst timing ever. Like, some of the other times, I think you missed earlier on where you could have been, like, pushing a little harder. But, like, this is, like, where it's really bad. So you finally like, mount a defense here. Like, after you're down two racks, which is most certainly not ideal. Your team has a lineup that could still win. I'm not going to say you can't win. The Enigma is probably the only really annoying part of this. <laughs> but yeah, like, AM's purpose in life, it, like, people are like, oh, he's like an AFK farming hero, which is, like, semi-true. You can AFK farm the hero, but it's, like, real purpose is to, like, split push like crazy. And what split pushing means is, like, you force the enemy to make a, make a choice. So to back up and talk about this for a second. Alright, well, I'm going to... Oh, I'm already in free camera. So, like, let's say this tier 2 is up. The enemy team is grouping in this area, right? Let's say there's 5 people. Your team standing behind is, like, 4. If you're pushing this, the enemy team needs to choose. We can respond to the AM, stop him from pushing, give up on our push, which means they basically wasted a little bit of time going there for no reason. And they're missing farming opportunities. Uh, option B is they just jump prematurely. Like, ideally, they're waiting for, like, let's say in this lineup, they want, like, Enigma to get a blink black hole that's really good. But they need to wait until that opportunity presents itself at this tower. So, like, let's say all of a sudden all four heroes show up here. That's the moment they're waiting for, and they can go in. But your team's not stupid, so they shouldn't be doing that, right? So that means, like, maybe they have to settle for a one- or a two-man black hole. Like, maybe instead of black holing, like, like, three or four, they settle for, like... Uh, a black hole on like the shadow fiend and that gives you an opportunity to then tp back in after their spells are on cooldown and they started to jump in and then you can blink manta on like the invoker who's maybe near like one or two other people and then you get off a huge mana void on the invoker which can win a fight so your point the point of that is like you, you want to force a team to make a suboptimal decision they need to start a fight before they necessarily want to or they need to respond to you thus wasting their time and if they choose to respond to you that means odds are they're not going to respond to an anti-mage with one hero right they probably need to send two like maybe the enigma and the juggernaut or something or they send the two of them that puts your team in a situation where they're in a four on three and then if you're able to tp back if they can start a fight let's say Bla axe hits a blink call you start tping back then your team's in a five on three which is super advantageous or even if, let's say, they send back the Jug just to stop you from farming. If they send back just the Juggernaut just to stop you from pushing, then your team's in a 5 on 4, which is still advantageous for you in most situations. Particularly, they have to send back one of their biggest farmers. That, that guy's worth 20k of their net worth. That's their whole advantage, and then some gone. <laughs> you guys are actually catching up in experience, but you're only down 12k experience. So if you make the Juggernaut not show up to that fight... Then that that fight, they're functionally down 10k in their in their advantage, so to speak, right? So that's like a really important concept to understand on anti mage is forcing the suboptimal decision. And all that means is making them choose to start a fight that they don't want to start, and like that's e that's even easier when they're pushing high ground. Tier two is gonna be a little meh, but like you can try and talk to your team and decide like what you're gonna do for that, right? And the only way you can force a decision, like, you being in the jungle doesn't force them to make a decision. That means they can take their sweet time while your team is just trying to fight something off. They don't choose between their tier 2 and, like, a suboptimal team fight. Here you fight, but you're so far, your team's just so far behind right now.
Let's go back to when we lost that first Rax. I think we've seen... Well, we'll watch the end of the game and then we'll, we'll go back to that. I think that's somewhere over here. I think travels are pretty smart to get right now. You need to be able to wrap more. And you're pretty much out of slots, right? Hmm. Looking back for this fight. Come here. Mm. You really want to try and jump the invoker, honestly. So you're able to just heal up off those creeps, even though those are like mega creeps or super creeps. You're still able to heal up quite a bit off. Oh, you're dead as fuck here. No, not dead? Okay. They just black holed you, but I think you got interrupted. I mean, your team's just fighting uphill at this point. Like, it's been uphill. And you guys are making a valiant hold. Like, I'll give you that. You're probably up so much EXP now. 10k. Yeah, it's okay. The gold graph is equalized now. Mainly because you're super far ahead. But the amount you should have been pushing, you're actually... Your farm is particularly low, considering how much you've been pushing, even after, like, a late everything. So let's back up. We don't really, don't really care. We've been fighting uphill for a long time. And we're not able to, like, do enough here. So here, this is... This is the fight. Where you guys are gonna lose the racks. I think, right? your manta at this point nice this isn't the fight then i don't think this is the fight so i think you are very very close to your manta by the time this fight happens now you lose top and then you lose middle so we want to watch this fight because i was watching your first person perspective and you didn't look at the fight and that's a huge problem you need to be really aware of like everything that's going on and when you can contribute to a fight Oh, never mind. You guys lost mid first. <coughs> Let's look at this. Oh, uh, this is something really useful to know. If someone's BKB'd or repelled, like let's say this invoker is down to like 200 mana. He's got repel on him. You can ult him and the AoE damage will happen. So like, let's say this, the Omni Knight is standing right here. And you ult the invoker who has 200 mana. He'll take the 1200 magic damage. The invoker won't because the invoker is uh, magic immune. But the AoE damage from anti mage's ult does still go through to everyone else who's not magic immune. I think this is where you just like blinked across the woods. Like you should have been pushing bottom here. If you don't think you can fight. Which without the axe I think it's understandable not to want to fight and just say hey give up one. Do they have black hole up? They do. I don't know why this guy has an Aether Lens. It's really stupid. Without the Axe call, that's going to be a hard fight to win. So, well, you didn't look at it, but I think it was the right call not to show up to that one. But the second Rax, you definitely have to try and hold. It's really... Defending the second Rax after the first one's down is definitely hard. But you have your Manta coming now. Like, you need to look for this fight. You can't let this one go, too. Because they take your first and your second racks over the course of, like, two minutes. And, like, I, I think you're going to see a situation where you can hold this one. This axe is kind of stupid. It's a duel. Good black hole. You should be TPing back to this. Like, when would we want to TP back? As soon as that axe blinks in, you TP here. You could have man avoided that enigma, interrupted his black hole, and then your team might have had a shot. Just man avoiding that enigma is going to do 600 AoE damage. Like, let's look how they're stacked up for this. I don't know what kind of call that is. You were here. That alt does some damage. Ah, uh, it's pretty awkward though. Like I don't know if you would have been able to win that fight, but like you had to have been there to try, because maybe you could have even interrupted the enigma. 
and like stopped him from blinking in, which might have made a difference because that blink that it's kind of hard. Your team is like pretty far behind, but like you have to make a stand somewhere, and like two axes being lost isn't that's not really the stand. Even though like your team does put up a fight for a little while, like for those two racks, you did nothing. They still have a tier one here for fuck's sake, and this tier two. So remember you went like you went like this and like farm the woods instead of pushing this. Remember the jug showed up there at some point, but you could have forced the jug to show up. Another thing you could try is like creep cutting. If you're really not in a situation to fight, and you see them grouping middle, you can just come here and cut their creep wave multiple mm -hmm. times. You like cut the creep wave here, farm the ancients. I will say cut the creep wave here. Farm the ancients, jump back, cut the creep wave. Or I guess maybe we'll jump here, cut the creep wave again, and then farm here. And that'll save your team one minute of time. That'll give them another one minute of stalling where the enemy won't have a creep wave to go on. I mean they have they have legions overwhelming odds. They have they have raises. They have plenty of ways to like stop people stop a creep wave. And all they have to do is give her that one creep wave, and then you got backdoor protection. So that's a really that's another really useful tool in your arsenal. But like, if I went over this whole game again, I'm sure I'd see other opportunities by specifically looking for times where you could have been split pushing and pressuring towers. But um, I'm probably I'm not I'm well I'm definitely not going to look over it again. Um, because there's definitely enough for you to work with there. Because the point of the lads is definitively to try and split push and rat them to death and it helps against like the physical damage they do too <coughs> oh shit i haven't had an overlay this whole time it helps against the physical damage they do from like the juggle the rest of their damage isn't really physical so whatever <laughs> but yeah so that that about wraps it up so i'd work on your early game farming uh going going back going all the way back to base Going all the way back to base on like the three minute mark was stupid. You could have just flown yourself out tango another four tangos and a salve and you would have been fine. You just took too much harass when you didn't have to and that sent you back to base. When you're really struggling in a lane you can pull You can pull this into your creep wave and then see us under tower after killing the easy camp. That's another good way to catch up. You were creep aggering, which was good. That got you some farm earlier on, but I feel like you could have gotten more from the land. You did get some good kills on the Huskar, which should keep him in check for a little bit. I mean, he went 14 and 15. That's like standard fucking Huskar score. If I kill myself to like kill other people. Shitty here. You actually live a lot here in times where I don't think you should have. It's pretty funny. Um, and then definitely trying to, like, force those situations where they have to TP back to respond to you or make a fight that's more advantageous. Like, these two fights here were both going to be hard, but you had to choose one to fight up. And I'd say probably the second rack since your moronic axe was dead. But there could have been other fights earlier on where you could have done that. And I think you were trying to fight a little too much early on when you were behind. When you could have just farmed and then tp to those fights. So, uh, we'll end that video there. Hope this, uh, helps you out. Do I submit other replays or message me with any questions?